Welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim B at C. And in cleaning out some of my files in preparation for uh, showing you things down here in the Caribbean, I found some stuff that uh, I thought I'd put together. Here's a couple short little videos, or I should say two, two separate topics, but I figured that uh, I, you guys have asked about both of them. So this is one where I film us going to go get in push gear, and a lot of you guys have wanted to see how we actually make up. Um, a little later after I get done, we get done with this, uh, stick around and I'll show you some of uh, a little thing I shot about virtual buoys. We have vir virtual uh, H navigation. But anyway, as you can see, we're coming up to our old lay berth at Berth 51 in Port Newark. And we have to get in uh, push gear over here. So the tankermen live on the barge, so they're in there. They, they know that we're coming at some time, but they don't know when we're coming. Uh, you can see I'm taking off speed the whole time. Now, if I go flying up there, I have the power, especially being light tug. We say light tug, meaning that we don't have a barge with us. I can back this thing down and stop it. The only problem is I'm going to marry the tug to the barge. And if I'm pulling a, a four or five foot uh, wake behind me, that will push us and crash us into the barge. And it will it'll just be uh, kind of ugly and not right. So... You can hear you can hear me slowing down here, taking more and more way uh, way off. And uh, a lot of times, if I get right there, I'll go and I'll back down right before there. And when some of you guys have noticed a lot of things shaking and all that sort of stuff from the cavitation, we've done a whole bunch of videos about cavitation. The noise in the water is great from the wheels when they start cavitating. And so uh, most of the time, as I'm approaching a barge, the tankerman will start suiting up and already know that I'm coming here. Um, in this particular one, this is a tankerman who uh, is a little bit more lax about things. I think I have to give him a little encouragement with a horn, but we'll see if it, how it happens here. But you can see my AB is there with the headline ready. And remember that the headline does two things for us. One, it holds us in place while we're making up, uh, but it also, uh, the, the biggest fear is there's a possibility of tripping the barge if one of the push legs were to break and we are underway because the other push leg wouldn't break it would pull on that side and then eventually make us go sideways if we came out of the notch we would pull sideways and the push wire that would oh there i am blowing the horn right there um the push wire that would be up would actually roll the tug over so the headline serves as a couple safety things one to hold us in place while we're making up so that it's nice and smooth and the other is to keep the bow in the notch in the case of a push line uh, push gear failure you'll see we also put up some safety gear too here comes the tankerman and as predicted he does look rather relaxed <laughs> So once we get in the notch here, I usually leave one engine in gear just to keep us. If I don't, it'll go bang, bang, bang. And even though we're all rubberized like that, the people that are sleeping get woken up by the, I guess it's sudden deceleration, deceleration when you stop. So here I am telling them, stop talking. Come on, we gotta, we're late, we gotta go. <laughs> The hardest part of the, some of these jobs is trying to encourage the tankerman to uh, let the line down so we can get, we can do our job. <laughs> this isn't really their fault. They've been hanging out. Sometimes they hang out for a couple days waiting for the next job. We've been going and we've all drank a couple pots of coffee and we're ready to go. And these guys are just being rustled out of uh, their slumber. So of course they're uh, not as eager as we are. So it's kind of understandable. <laughs> but Hunter is there with the line. He's ready. Um, normally if the barge was loaded it would be much lower so uh, he'd be able to throw it up himself but this is going to require a hook line 
A hook line is a heaving line with a little metal hook on the end of it that the tankerman will pull up, and he, you'll see he puts it on. Interesting, Grab it from the Elk River. Interestingly enough, this bit that he's going to put on is called a crucifix bit for probably obvious reasons, but if you ever see a bit that looks like that, it's called a crucifix bit. Good morning. Hey, we're so while the guys on deck are uh, all making this all up, I make my call into traffic and... Uh, Give my, uh, we call it calling in on initial, so we give the dimensions and who we are and where we're going and what we're doing. So now that we've got the headline up, I'll start putting the rudder over while I'm still working ahead and start leaning the, the tug over to one side, in this case the port side, and they'll be passing up. Here we go, I think I'm moving the camera for you. Here we go, yeah, that's good. Oh, good. Okay, so now he's just sending up a messenger, and a messenger is just a line that's tied on to the end of the push gear. So now the tankerman's going to start pulling up the push gear, and if you, you see, the push gear looks black. That's actually really heavy-duty stuff that's like made out of Kevlar that is uh, anti-chafing stuff. So it, it's sacrificial. That, that will get beat up before the push gear does. The push gear is the Amstel Blue, or the synthetic line underneath there, which is... Uh, almost twice as strong by weight than wire or maybe even I think it's even more than that but I know that it's about twice as strong by size of wire so uh, anyway he's gonna pull that up and you'll see on the others on the other push gear I, I'm hoping that I have a better oh no look I moved this so you'll be able to see okay so he put that on there and what what the AB, the tankerman, and the operator, in this case me, we all do is that that push gear will move because when you tighten it up, only one side tightens up. You know what I mean? It's a two-part two part line, so the one side is affixed to the boat and the other is affixed to the winch. So when you pull on it, it's only pulling from one side, so over time, um, the, push, the, the chafe gear can move on the push gear, and uh, if it's not around the hard points you know, around the corner, the 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 stern of the barge, or around the uh, chalk, or going around the bits, then it doesn't really uh, help anything out. Now, what the tankerman's doing right here is he is removing a stern line that's tied up to the other one because he knows that when he pulls the, the push gear over, he's going to have to put that line up. There's a bit that he can tie that up to, and uh, he may do that, but he also might just loosely put it over here because he knows that we're not going anywhere. We're going to bring that push leg of the push gear up tighten it up and then we'll get underway so now he comes over and probably sees another opportunity to have some nice pleasant conversation <laughs> now he's gonna pull the tag line up or messenger line and he's got to get around some obstructions there, but he'll be pulling up the push gear. Now you can see, you'll, you'll probably from this angle, you're going to have a much better view of the difference between the push gear and the chafe gear. And he also has got to take any twists out because twists will be areas of chafe. And it sounds silly, but the the amount of pressure that's put on these are is just astronomical. Like I say, you would have to have wire twice as twice as big as these lines are and uh, it still wouldn't match the strength of these synthetic lines. So now he's putting that over and you can see where it goes from black to blue. That means that uh, that's good. Now what I'll be doing, um, I don't think you're actually going to see it. Maybe you will. I don't know, I don't know how long this video runs. but um, What I'll do is I'll get the boat somewhat squared up in the notch. I'm still working ahead on one engine. That was me just cl closing the door as I walked back to the doghouse. The doghouse is the little house in the back that over that run where you operate the winch from. And I'll be tightening up the push gear from the back of the doghouse there. So probably starting up the tow engine right now. I'm interesting be interesting to see if this is gonna be just dead space or if <laughs> I shut the camera off after I get it tight. I'd like to think that I... Oh, oh, here it is. I see... You can see the line get coming up. Now, nobody's pulling on that. That's the winch pulling. And you can see how that leg is bigger than the inside leg. And the reason why is the inside leg is tied off to the to the 
uh, tug, the outside leg, goes to the barge. Now, originally, those two black things were in line with each other. Every time you do it, it kind of ratchets it up a, a few inches or a foot. And so uh, you can see that the angle is different now, and the angle isn't bad because um, it, the angle hasn't changed other than that the boat was cocked to the port side. Now, as you tighten up on the push wires, it becomes centered up and it looks like you have what we call a better purchase, a, a, a better angle to hold us in there. So that should be it. I, mean, I think I'm tightening it up here again with a winch. Maybe we are going and adjusting things on the other side. And as long as that inside one doesn't get to the corner of the barge, it'll work. As once it's tight, it shouldn't move. It's just the act of tightening it is what changes over time. So now I've got it all tight, and that's how we do it. And we go, we shut the lower house down, we go up to the upper house. And so, uh, thank you for watching that. Now I'm going to switch over and show you about virtual buoys. So stick around for that. See this buoy right here? This buoy in the Hudson River. I'm going to show it to you when we go by. But what I wanted to show you is that because of where it is, a lot of ice builds up here in the winter. So they have to change it out and make it into what we call an ice buoy. Problem is, the ice buoys get moved all around too with the ice. So they've developed these things called virtual buoys. And any of you guys who are uh, who have AIS or maybe are uh, maybe newer to AIS than some other people are. If you see a little triangle that would normally represent what a uh, a target would be, or you know, a boat, um, these are what we call virtual buoys. And they'll even they'll even have the little on on the chart. They even put a little thing there showing that it's a virtual buoy. That uh, so so what happens is when when the ice goes. See, I'm trying to find the buoy right now. They're much smaller. Uh, the regular sized buoys get uh, attacked by the ice real bad and they get they, they get pulled out and dragged down the river so so by making a virtual buoy through AIS it doesn't matter where the actual buoy is the, the it'll show up on your plotter or in this case my radar and my plotter and uh, show us where the buoy should be even if the ice moved it so up oh, there it is up there I don't think you can see it yet I'll try to get a better shot of it when we get closer but you can see it doesn't look like a regular buoy it's long and skinny so the idea is that it'll pull through the ice but I'll try to get a better shot when we get closer in fact I took a bunch of pictures going up the river was the light got a little better of different buoys so you'll see a couple different buoys. There'll be reds and greens and all here. But these are what they call ice buoys. And as you can see, they're kind of shaped so that they don't get pulled in the ice as much as the regular buoys do. But that's it. And uh, now you guys know. And uh, another thing that I should point out is that the radar is very hard to use when the where you, it's, it's unoperable when the river freezes over because as soon as the ice freezes, the ice becomes one target. All right, hope you guys liked that video. Thank you for watching.